As a tech and psych years ago, there was a seven-year-old kid sent to the floor because his mom didn't know what to do with him. Sadly, common thing to happen even if the kids don't have psych issues. Anyway, the mom was shaking and crying, and they had to take the kid into another room. She was genuinely afraid of her own son. She had suspected something was wrong when she kept finding mutilated animals in the backyard, but never heard or saw coyotes or anything around. The neighbor's smaller pets started disappearing. The boy had an obsession with knives, hiding them around the house, denying anything when the mom confronted him. Then, when the two started getting into arguments, he would get really violent and hit her, push her down and kick her, threaten to kill her. On multiple occasions, she woke up in the middle of the night with him standing beside her bed, staring her in the face. She put extra locks on her bedroom door to feel safe while she slept. The last straw was when she lifted up his mattress and found more than 50 knives of all shapes and sizes under there. So she brought him to us. I remember talking to him, treating him like he was just another kid that came through. He seemed remarkably normal until you spoke directly to him. He had this way of looking right through you, or maybe like he didn't see you at all while you were speaking. He would respond like a robot, like he was just saying words because that's what we wanted to hear. And he would always put on this creepy, dead-looking smile, like all mouth and no eye involvement in the smile, especially when he would get away with something, like taking another kid's markers and they couldn't figure it out. Still gives me chills laying here thinking about him. I had to get up and close my bedroom door. I believe I met a seven-year-old psychopath. A 13-year-old boy came in for a routine checkup and vaccines. He was already acting like an angsty teenager, giving only one-word answers at first and pouting while his mother was in the room. At his age, if I ask parents to step out of the room to ask personal questions about sex, drugs, tobacco, alcohol, etc. He answered no to everything, but after I asked, is there anything you want to ask me before I have mom come in, his tone changed. He started to tear up and shudder and talk about seeing bloody shadows in his periphery and that he had been hearing voices for four years. He always thought it was literally his subconscious and everyone could physically hear their own voices. He only started to worry recently when his best friend died in a car wreck and now the voices were yelling at him that he's stupid. It's his fault. Kill yourself. And then he said they were telling him to kill me. They've been telling him to kill others for weeks. I didn't freak out, but I was thinking I could not believe what I was hearing. I had a psych team see him immediately, and he was brought to a psych ward. The mother was shocked and had no idea. I saw him two months later, and he was a completely different kid. Sarcastic as shit, but funny and interactive and happy. It was like night and day after some ripper doll. For whatever reason, this creeped me out the most because I don't normally deal with psych. I've seen lots of post-mortem stuff dealing with trauma, so I've been desensitized to lots of things, but this event was the most surreal thing to me, mainly because it was so unexpected. On a medical school rotation in psychiatry, I rotated at a hospital which is essentially a full-time psych ward for folks who have pleaded insanity or ended up in an acute psych hospital and were eventually transferred here because they could not become well enough to go home. The place was actually very nice. It was nothing like you see on TV. It was essentially like a college dorm with six or eight wings total. Each wing had 16 rooms and each wing was broken down by gender. Each wing also had a gated outdoor area and a gym area so that the patients had a relatively good life. Considering, I met many patients with crazy stories, but one always will stand out. This young guy, about 25 years old, was there. He had had these delusions just after college about some girl he had had a crush on his freshman year of college. She wrote for a popular magazine, and he supposedly had these delusions that she was writing about him to make fun of him. He hunted her down in her hometown, 
raped her, and tried to kill her, but she escaped. He then pled insanity and was placed here. I went up and talked to him as a little third-year med student. I started asking about his delusions and whatnot. It turns out his father was high up in an international corporation and worth millions. The kid, who was hauntingly normal on the surface and incredibly creepy once you started digging, told me that he basically pled insanity only because his lawyer said to. He never had delusions, never had hallucinations, nothing. He basically thought the girl was hot in college, drove 400 miles to rape her, then freaked out. But his lawyers advised that he plead guilty because as a soft, upper-class kid, he'd do much better in the psych hospital than in prison. So there he was. Luckily, he'll likely spend longer in there than he would have in prison, because generally that's how it works. But he seriously creeped me the fuck out. I work as a psychotherapist in a hospital system. My definition of creepy is probably quite a bit different from other medical professionals. The one that got to me the worst was a patient who came to us after attempting suicide by sawing off both his arms off at the forearm with a table saw. His arms were reattached fairly successfully too, which only limited impairments in mobility. All I could think of was how bad it would have to be to live in his head that sawing his arms off seemed better than that. He has since completed suicide. Edit. A table saw is a saw mounted in a table that stays on once turned on. All you have to do is run things into the saw to cut them. This is how he could cut both arms off. Also, suffice it to say that if you are in a state of mind that finds cutting your arms off to kill yourself or to relieve psychological pain, you are not in the state of mind to determine the most efficient way to kill yourself. I work in an ER and due to my country and state's poor mental health system, we see acute psychotic episodes daily. Over time, you get desensitized to it, but there is still one that turns my stomach. A guy was found in a burning abandoned building. He wasn't hurt, but was acting so strange the paramedics brought him in. He was homeless, had no ID, did not know his name, and had zero drugs in his system. Looking into his eyes, you could tell he wasn't seeing the same thing I was. So I'm trying to get his name or anything out of him, and he keeps telling me. He was a pilot for the Air Force and flew experimental airplanes, because he could withstand the G-force and his blood was naturally thin. The blood tests that measure this actually were fairly higher than normal, but not elevated to the point he was on medication for it, so he was right on that account. I was at the desk telling a co-worker about the stuff this guy was saying when a resident overheard me. He was former Air Force as well, and looked like he had seen a ghost. As soon as I mentioned the name of the base, this doctor freaked out. He said that the city slash base has no roads in or out, and a lot of top secret testing goes down there. He said that you don't know about it unless you've been there. He told me not to talk about it or make a big deal. This gave me an even weirder vibe. 